I'm CT. When I'm not busy being Arrow the podcaster, I live in the real world. I mean, everybody has to have a job, right? Mine just happens to be CS, customer service, you know, solutions, relationships, while keeping my team pumped up and motivated to keep a constant connection with each person who has chosen to stop into our location. Episode number 109, easily offended guests, new GM, and a mysterious thief. This is CTCS. Transition walk, day number one out of two. Yeah, only two this week. Uh, The final leg of my tour. I mean, we've been on the road every week for the past few weeks, and it's like, wow, you hurt like hell, but you keep on playing. Isn't that what life is all about? Isn't that what going to CS is all about? It hurts like hell, but you keep on playing. Big rumor that we've got a new GM. This will be my fourth GM since I started there three years ago. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how he plays out the game. And will the team stay united? Because that's one of the things I learned in radio. Usually when there's a change at the top, the bottom is next. And this is how the day begins. Two people bringing things back. One of them, you trusted them. Uh, they had the receipt. Everything was going perfectly. The other one, I, I don't have a receipt. Do you know what story you bought it at? I don't know where I bought it at. And I said, okay, we have to at least look for it. Because I, I can't give you back your money uh, unless I have a receipt. So about 20 minutes goes by. Every store that he says that he got it from, uh, you know, doesn't show anything. So it's one of those things where you sit there and you go, did you steal it? Just tell me you stole it or something. Because, I mean, I'm not finding it in anywhere. And, you know, I'm not going to give you back your money. You don't have a receipt. Pretty much every Thursday, it always happens. Somebody comes up to customer service and says, you know, you just offended me. You offended me so badly inside this store. And it's like, oh, God, what did we do? And they go, I'm not 60 years old. Do not ever just give me a senior discount. Ask me if I'm that. And, uh, you know, you just made me feel just amazingly old today. <sighs> you just want to say one thing. You got 5% off. Be happy with that. Just met the new GM. He comes up, introduces himself. He says, yeah, I just took over this position. I said, wow, you admit that? You know what that means, don't you? And he looks at me and he goes, who's this guy? This guy's weird. He goes, no, what does it mean? More responsibility, dude. Welcome to the circus. This is pretty original. Somebody goes up to our self-checkout clerk and says, uh, hey, man, I just got to go out to my car. I'll come in here and pay for this chicken. They've been eating the chicken for the past 30 minutes. They didn't come back. They had a free meal on us. But, I mean, what what a, what a smooth move. Who thinks of that kind of stuff anyway? When it comes to, hey, man, I'm just going to go out to my car and get my credit card. I'll, I'll be right back. And then we trust you. Every week on Senior Day, there's a woman that comes in, uh, a little bit beyond middle-aged, and uh, she likes to steal the deal. In other words, she will sit there, she'll scrape her finger on the label to get it to the point where it says that, hey, look, uh, uh, it, this this should have been sold two days ago. Uh, I want 35 40% off. And then when you look at it, you're going, first of all, you scrape the, the label off. Second of all, it says the 30th. Today is really only the 26th. So, uh, no. Okay, 10 minutes have gone by since uh, the last little episode with, uh, with the... Uh, the guest with with the hamburger scraping the labels um now she wants to get her uh, her milk uh she wants to get it for half off it's whole milk and the reason why she says because it's outdated she says you're right today is the 26th today is the 26th and she says but look at this milk and i said hey um it's not november this is it's good until november 25th 2023 are you so i can't have any money off no no you cannot We've got a very suspicious man in the building right now, very long hair, beard, not to typecast anybody or to stereotype anybody, but uh, uh, he's wearing his backpack on the front side, and he's not looking at anybody as he was going through the store, and you know, I mean, we're, we're just a couple of days off from what happened in Maine where 18 people were killed, so our security is definitely on this right now. Uh, we're waiting for him to patiently come out of the bathroom. He's now been in there for about 22 minutes. He's now walked out of the bathroom. The backpack is on his back, uh, like it should be worn. And now security is on high alert to find out uh, what is happening with this gentleman. What we have now is a game of cat and mouse where security is trying to, you know, do the circle just to kind of make some sort of contact with the gentleman. But uh, once he sees that, that we're looking at him, then he turns and walks a completely different way. And so we're headed toward the back of the store to find out, especially back here by the meat, so that he doesn't grab anything. 
So we're on a mission right now with security to try to get this guy to come from back of the store to the front of the store. And so we're going to start uh, circling from behind to kind of get that guy to move up into the front part of the store so we can have a better um, eye at what he's doing. Uh, he's been hanging out in lane number seven for about three minutes right now. But what security wants to feel safe and secure here, and we believe that getting him out of the building is the best way. I just passed him in aisle number five. I think what makes it so mysterious is the fact that uh, he's got a mask on, but it's the typical mask that you would wear, you know, like in the old 70s movies when you were going to rob a bank. And that could be what's screwing around with our minds right now is that, you know, he just doesn't look right. And, you know, so we're going to try to go in and have a conversation with this guy. Honestly, there should be a mandatory rule. You cannot bring a large backpack or bookcase into a grocery store, especially in this day and age where we actually have to watch all of these active shooter videos. And so, and that's what I think has us on the edge here is that that active shooter inside that last video we saw kind of looks like this guy. And so, you you know, you sure your, your anxiety is on high and you're a little bit nervous. Security is very much aware of what's going on. Around, he was the other way, but he's still back on seven. See, I, I saw him go over to the bakery and then he walked in front of us. Yeah. Are there gigantic crates or anything like that over there where you can hide behind it? Yeah. Yeah, so. the, the pallets and stuff. Transition walk, day number two out of four. Well, it's supposed to be, but I have a live performance tonight, and I've got another one tomorrow night, so I'm only going to do two days in CS this week. Uh, I want to do a follow-up as I walk through this forest, because last night was a very high-anxiety moment, especially since the things that have taken place in Maine and other parts of this nation. The way it played out is that he kept walking through the store all the way up to closing time. They got him to go over to self-checkout, anything, anything, just to make sure that he was out of the store by closing. And uh, even though his basket had things in it when we kept passing him and trying to spark up a conversation, when he got to self-checkout, there was nothing in the basket. And that's how it ended. Where did it go? Was it a theft? What happens now? And if he ever took off the mask... Would we recognize him in public? This is the way of the world. I wrote about this today in my daily writing. That it's very difficult to look at the chaos and the recklessness and the uneasiness of this modern world. Do we choose to hide behind our writing windows? Here we go. Day number two, out on the road. This is going to be the final performance in at least a month. Unless you get booked again. That's what it's all about, getting booked. The business side of the music business. Uh, man, we had a full, full play last night. I love it. When people let themselves go enough to where they don't mind singing their favorite songs out loud and so proud. I was just so, so amazed by their, their journey with us last night. Transition walk, day number four out of four, going back in to see us today after being on that live stage two nights in a row, back to back. Yeah, it's a different kind of pain is what it is when you do a live show because you're consistently building your stage and taking down your stage. And when you do that two nights in a row with all that heavy music equipment, man, it, it plays hell on the mind, body, and soul in the way that, oh, well, now I've got to go dedicate eight or nine hours in customer service. My thing to my wife was, look... I'm going to move at a slower pace today because I ain't going to race through this day and face injury. You know, on any given Sunday, it's, you're going to be bumping into liars, stealers, complainers, uh, people that are just looking to have some sort of rumble. And uh, my day starts off with a guy coming up and saying, yeah, man, this shrimp is buy one, get one free. Now, here's the thing. If it were buy one, get one free, I would see a lot of these shrimp coming across my register, but I'm not. It's the first one that I've seen so far. And so I go, I'll tell you what, it's taking $2 off, but it's not going to be buy one, get one free. Yes, it is. Okay, hold on. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Let me go back and take a look. And if I'm wrong, then I, then I apologize. And no, I was not wrong. It was $2 off. And now the pet peeve of the day. Okay, you've got six registers that are full. Two of the six have decided to get engaged in a conversation and you've got four and five people in line to check out. You ask them, hey, you got to break it up. Somebody get back on that register and let's get this line moving. They don't move. You mention to it again. They don't move. You walk up to them and you very calmly say with kind of a stern voice and they don't move. And what happens is, is that then a department head comes over to you and says, they don't have to listen to you. Oh, pet peeve of the day. 
Halloween is this coming Tuesday, and we are selling pumpkins like you would not believe, and candy. Oh my God, what we do is we go and we work with our other stores in the chain to see if they can bring over some of their candy and pumpkins. We had eight gigantic crates of pumpkins at 11 o'clock this morning. We're now down to one and a half, and so it's like, okay, where are we going to find pumpkins? Find me a farmer. we got to sell some pumpkins. The weekly football fan drunk fest continues at the store. They usually come in, they break bottles of wine, they break other things, including two huge bottles of spaghetti sauce. And uh, do they say sorry? No, no, they're not expected to say sorry. Uh, do they say thank you for cleaning it up? No, 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 they're not expected to thank you for cleaning it up. It's your job, it's your job. We just had somebody try to pass off a fake $50 bill. Uh, they said, look, man, when you use that pin on it, it's fake. It's fake. You know, there's no such thing. It's a real bill. Well, you know what? When you look it up, but you know what? When you look at a $50 bill at a light, you should be able to see the face on the other side. And don't forget about that strip. That strip is authentic. Nobody's going to fake putting that on there. And the thing is, is that when you've got a fake $50 bill, except the fact that you've been identified, you ain't going to jail. We're not going to call the cops on you. Just, you know, you took a chance. You know, let's shake hands and come back with something that's called real money. 